All right. Um, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the first 512 bytes of code that get run after, well, first 512 bytes of code that you get, that get run that you have real control over in a traditional BIOS booted machine. Um, you can see over here, I've got like a, you know, there's simple overview of what all is going on here. Um, we just set up our addressing, um, you know, our segment registers. Um, and then we relocate um, where we're like, where all of our code is in memory to a new address because we're gonna load the next phase of the bootloader, which is covered in BIOSboot.s, uh, where we were originally loaded. Um, do some checking for, see if we should force cylinder head segment mode. Um, you know, find first active partition, um, and then like load it, like find out where that first active partition's first segment is, load it where we were, and then jump to it. That's the law, that's the short version. Um, I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about just general assembly in this video. Um, just because I don't know who's watching these, which, you know, for being honest, right now at least anyway, it's pretty much no one. But, uh, you know, it's good for me, I guess, anyway. Um, and you know, if you're you know a little want to learn a little bit about assembly, maybe you'll learn something. Um, so anyway, uh, so we get loaded at um, the real address. So real address in mode is like set up in these like four nibble or you know two byte segments. Um, and two byte offsets. Um, these are shifted to the left four bits, AKA multiplied by 16, and then this gets added to it. So there's more than one way to look at the same address in real address mode, depending on what your segments are and your offsets are. Um, but like the underlying flat address space it goes from zero to one megabyte. Um, and this first instruction is just normalizing that. Uh, we wanna make sure that the CS segment holds 07 uh, C zero. Um, and um, that our offset is like zero, basically starting at start. Um, so, or that start is like offset zero. So we do this long jump to fill CS with this value and then just jump to the next instruction. Um, that's the, what this one F means. It means one forward. Um, and then we store that value in AX and then put that in our stack segment. Uh, the boot stack offset is large enough that like we're not gonna hit it. Uh, <laughs> you know, cause, uh, and also at the same time, uh, small enough that uh, it's not going to um, be affected by the boot. Actually, I don't know, I haven't looked at that, but um, yeah, no, I checked at one point and nothing like is gonna collide. Although, you know, feel free to double check any of that if you're interested. Um, and then, uh, you know, set up the data segment and then we are this little segment of assembly code uh, moves hex 200, which is 512. Um, we move that to uh, back a segment in memory. 
So we start at like 7C00 is where our code is loaded in the like linear address space. Uh, and we're gonna move it to 7A00. Um, and that's basically what this does. Like you just set up, okay, um, ES is gonna be the boot relocation segment, 7A0. Um, and then zero out SI and DI. And then this um, move SB, rep move SB instruction just increments uh, your uh, ES, uh, or sorry, your uh, SI flag um, and stores it. Uh, or sorry, in, in, yeah, increments your SI flag, gets the byte that it was stored at before you increment it, and puts that at ESDI. Um, check the Intel manual if you want all the details, but it's relocating us to uh, 7A00. Uh, and then we do a long jump to that uh, location. Um, Right, this off this offset is zero based from start, so it's gonna like still work correctly when we do this. Um, we're just changing like our segment, um, <clears throat> and then uh, we our DS is still set up at seven C zero zero, so we change it to be at ES, or we change that to be ES. And then our CS is at 7A00, and so we put that into DS using this push and pop because we can't, like, it's easier to use the stack instead of trying to, uh, <laughs> instead of trying to, like, figure out, okay, I'm going to load some value into DS, but uh, I don't know. I Maybe this... I think it's actually, I don't know why you, you don't think you have to do it like this, but it makes sense to do it like that. I don't see why not. Um, this is really not necessary on modern computers. This is the check if we should force CHS mode or cylinder head uh, sector mode on a drive, which for any computer made in the last, you know, in this millennium, uh, you probably shouldn't have to do. Um, but this is old code, like, what, like, uh, yeah, 1996, uh, originally 1997, um, so, like, they were still worried about that back then, um, and so, like, yeah, that's what that's doing, and then this, uh, Yeah, so assuming, well, and this just gets that data. Um, we don't like do anything with it yet. We just store it in the flags, like location and memory anyway. Um, and then we loop through the uh, like partition table, which is at the very end. Um, so, Right, this is the partition table label in this assembly code. Um, and this is gonna be filled in by your like F disk program um, and say like, hey, here's where the partition for like the OpenBSD file system lives. Um, and like only one of these should be active. You can see this DOS active. They fill in like a default value here uh, for OpenBSD because normally the OpenBSD uh, file system uh, or partition is the third one and uh, takes up the whole disk. At least that's what it'll default to on the install. Um, uh, I lost my uh, marker. Um, so, yeah, and like basically we just start there and then like there's only four of them that there can be and like one of the like you can have like more than four partitions on a bios disk but they have to be stored within an extended partition 
and this code isn't going to check for that. Uh, it's just going to find the first active partition. It should check that it's the only part, like active partition, but they don't check for it. And then <clears throat> uh, once they find it, right? If the like first uh, two or first byte indicates that it's the like active partition, then you jump to found, which is down here. Um, if it doesn't, then like it's gonna halt the machine. Um, so you know, I mean, if you're feeling brave, you could uh, mark, you know, go in and DD your like that byte on your disk and mark it as like not active, and uh, like watch your machine not boot. <laughs> um, so yeah, some pretty like fragile stuff. Um, around here um but then yeah they like store the drive number in decimal and then they like find the partition number that they booted in decimal and store that in drive num and part num and then they print off this little message saying like which drive and partition they're using um and this little bit right here um so if it's like using uh, CHS mode, then it will like just do using drive X partition Y. If not, it'll have like a little exclamation point in front of that. So if you uh, look at, um, where is it? Yeah, so if you look at this info message, say, it increment it starts off right here but then when they find that you're not using CHS mode they increment it um, yeah so um, yeah um, and then like they do an uh, BIOS interrupt call if you're interested in learning more about BIOS interrupt calls um well okay actually sorry um what they're doing here is this little bit is they're like zeroing out their the last uh two bytes of um where we were loaded um because after they load the partition table entry that first 512 bytes of the active partition, they're gonna check and make sure that that is no longer zero to make sure that something got loaded at least. Um, and then they're gonna check again if they were like told to ignore uh, logical block addressing, I believe is what LBA stands for. Um, find out if they have logical block addressing. So this is what I was getting into. Um, BIOS interrupt calls. Uh, it's convenient that they reproduce here in the comments what uh, the particular interrupt call they're using is. Um, if you want to, like, you know, see all of them, uh, Ralph Brown's interrupt list is uh, sort of the, I don't know, canonical reference. Um, for like, you know, looking all this stuff up. But uh, like, I mean, if I were creating a fresh OS that was only design, like, designed to support computers made in the last 12, 20, 15, 20 years, uh, I probably wouldn't even do this because like, I'm pretty sure all modern, uh, I'm pretty sure all modern BIOSes offer this feature. Um, because cylinder head uh, sector addressing can only like look at the first eight gigabytes of a disk anyway. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's dumb. But they tell you sort of what all this is doing and um, they're gonna switch to doing CHS mode if like any of the things that, you know, there's any of the values that are they're supposed to get returned aren't. Um, you know, you can read this on your own time. I want to keep this video reasonably short. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's where all the magic happens is with these BIOS interrupt calls when we're first starting out. Um, and then they like once they realize that they have logical block addressing, uh, they load in that uh, first sector of the partition boot record where, you know, the MBR was originally located using another BIOS interrupt call. And then we jump to booting OS. Um, if that doesn't work, they'll fall through and try CHS read. Um, but booting OS, like, they print like a new line and then they compare the DOS MBR signature uh, with, you know, the end of the PBR and make sure that those two are equal. If they're not, they're gonna jump to this missing OS. Otherwise, this like won't do anything. You'll just fall through to this long jump and uh, just jump to the new code. Um, and they, uh, it's funny because this does a long jump and sets the like sector to zero and the offset to the boot segment shifted left by four bits. Uh, but then if you look at like the first instruction on BIOS boot, uh, the first instruction that, th that this does is, well, okay, maybe not the first, um, but okay. Yeah, so it does a jump begin, uh, which is presumably a relative uh, jump. Like, absolute jumps can be either... They can be either relative or, um, like, absolute. Presumably, that's going to be absolute. Um, and then, the f but then after that, like, it... Well, and in fact, it has to be, r like, relative because... If it's absolute, this is going to get linked thinking that start is like address zero. Um, so if it doesn't absolute dress uh, or absolute jump to begin, begin is going to be like, I don't know, however much space there is between. So zero, three E, right? Zero, like hex three E. Um, but at hex three E, right since our like segment is zero currently that's like an interrupt table at the very beginning of memory that's and we'll see that like later on um but anyway uh that's you know it for mbr like next time i'll you know go through this um this bios boot dot s code um which i'm gonna get like less I mean, I didn't really go into that many details with the assembly on uh, MBR.S, but, you know, we'll, we'll go over it. Um, do a little walkthrough, you know. Um, maybe it's good sleeping material. Maybe it's uh, good background noise. Um, maybe you're a masochist. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, if you uh, enjoyed this, I'm glad. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Peace.